What's happening good people, welcome to Where's His Watch Room. Today we're going to be taking a look at this brand new release from a brand new micro brand from the UK, Atom Watches. So they sent this out to the channel to review, it does have to go back once it's been completed. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be talking a little bit about this watch in a bit more uh, detail. Uh, because this is a prototype, I'm going to discuss changes and everything that's going to be improved for the final version, uh, which is coming very, very soon, but more on that in a minute. So uh, we're going to start with the packaging first, because this is one thing that's going to be changing. So this is the box. Now, I don't know whether the aesthetics are changing to this, uh, but yeah, it's a quite a sturdy box. It's a good size. Lift off lid, and then you can see we've got this uh, flat section little elastic tabs to hold it in place and then this is removable as well so I'm presuming uh, your warranty card and everything will be underneath there. So the things that are changing with the uh, packaging are it's going to be completely plastic free which is awesome. Uh, but yeah I hope they keep the packaging actually because it's uh, you know the styling it's really nice and uh, you know it's durable too it's you know it's a, a solid feeling box. So now that's out of the way uh, let me just uh, move that. Uh, we'll talk watch specifications and then uh, throughout the review, you know, we'll talk what's changing and, uh, you know, all the things that are improving. Uh, things I like, things that I think, you know, could need changing beyond what they are changing, if there is anything. So, you know, let's uh, dive in. So starting uh, with the uh, launch date of this, uh, with it being a Kickstarter project, this is launching on the 14th of September. I'll discuss pricing at the end. Uh, so, uh, sizes of this one, the diameter is 40mm on the button, 42.7 if you include the crown, 47 and a half lug to lug, so it's a uh, nice and compact size, 11.9 thick as well, so not too bad at all. We have a standard 20mm lug width and the crown is 5.7mm. We have a bespoke 316L stainless steel case, a double domed sapphire crystal with AR coating, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. The loom is BGW9, again more on that in a bit, 100 meters of water resistance which is claimed, a leather strap which is there and I'll talk more about in a little bit, screw down crown, screw down case back and it weighs 72 gram on this strap and it's a little bit less on that one because this is a little bit heavier. So now let's, uh, you know, discuss a little bit more in detail about the watch. And the first thing I like is the aesthetics. I think they have nailed it. Even though the, uh, you know, the dial is quite big, I think it looks well proportioned because the numerals are large, the indices are large, you know, the hands are nice and long too. So everything just looks well proportioned, even though, you know, the bezel sloped, very nice slope, by the way. It, yeah, it just looks all well proportioned, even though we've got a lot of dial. I don't think it looks too big. Uh, so taking a closer look, you can see we've got a uh, printed minute track on the rehaul, really nice and uh, crisp. And then we've got these really large numerals at the 12, 3 and 9, all applied and loom filled for that BGW9. But yeah, they're really well done. They've got a high polished border and they're really, uh, really quite deep too. So it does create a nice bit of depth on that, um, on the dial. The indices are a, uh, like an oblong, but are, that are slightly tapered, just to give it a little bit more character and a little bit more interest. Again, they've got that same finish as the, um, as the main numerals. And yeah, again, they're very well done. Date window at the uh, six o'clock, you can see it's a circular date window, which is again bordered to match the indices. As for the dial and the branding, we've got a uh, black textured dial. There are a couple of different other color options as well. There's a white uh, and one other as well. So uh, that's nice to see. And yeah, the uh, dial does have a nice texture to it. And I think it's, uh, it's really nice. As for branding, you know, it's kept quite minimal. We've got their uh, logo the atom and then automatic above the date window and that is it so it's not cluttered with text and I think that does it a lot of favours. I think my favourite version of this one is the white though I think that looks awesome but this black one is great too. So taking a look at that case it got a real nice downturn to those lugs, brush sides and uh, brushing on the bezel as well. 
Really nicely done, satinized brushing, and it's done to a very, very good standard. So impressed there. Crown is signed with the A logo. It's got a uh, circular radial brush finish and some very nice, uh, you know, um, like a turbine style um, grip on it. So it's, it's very, very, uh, very, very nice and well done. Case back, you know, it's a uh, interesting one. We've got these specifications around the border and this really cool sort of bubble artwork um, in the middle. And I think it's awesome. You can just see it's got a radial finish to it as well. And then uh, sort of etching and then radial finish again. It's, it's really well done and, uh, you know, it's quite cool. So yeah, very, uh, very impressed. So the case, I am, you know, I'm impressed with it. It's uh, nice and solid. I love the aesthetic choices that they've made. And I think it is a very good looking watch. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, which are changing a little bit, are the hands. Now you can see, you know, they're uh, again we've got that really slender, tapered look to them. Very nice and long too, so you can see they extend right where they need to. So we've got no issues there. Uh, the only thing that's going to be changing on the hands is the finishing is going to match, uh, you know, the borders around the indices and numerals a little bit better, just for that uh, cohesion. But the uh, length and everything else is staying the same. So let's talk that strap. Now, unfortunately, I'm having a little bit of issues with this strap and not, not so much the quality of it, just because it's too big for me, which is why I've had to put it on a different one. So let's take a look at the strap. And uh, you know what? It's a really nice quality strap. So we have quick release spring bars branded on the inside, a nice soft leather inner, good quality stitching, nicely cut adjustment holes, and yeah, it's a very classic looking strap. Nice and flexible, really thin too. So it's, you know, super, you know, playable. Got a lot of flex and uh, movement in it. And I think it would be very comfortable, but like I said, it's a little bit too big. This side, we have one fixed keeper, one floating keeper, the same quality and a uh, branded brushed buckle. Now this is uh, something that's going to be changing to the uh, buckle. Um, they're going to be improving uh, the branding on it just to make it a little bit crisper and a little bit more neat on um, the final production model. But the rest is staying the same and I'm glad because it's very nice. You can see it's branded on this side as well. So you're yeah, very impressed with the strap quality. It's just a little bit too big. Uh, so they are going to be addressing that by making uh, this side with the buckle a little bit shorter so that way it should fit us guys with slim wrists as well as you guys with thicker wrists also so that's uh, great to uh, see so now we've got all uh, that out of the way let's get this on wrist and show you how it actually wears now i'm not going to be talking comfort because you know it's not on its original strap and it's on a uh, aftermarket one but you know i'll just tell you how the watch wears rather than talk about the strap and there it is on wrist and while we're actually uh, got it on wrist we'll talk a little bit about that double dome crystal as well so it does state that it does have ar on it and you can see that even with you know a lot of glare from my light it's still legible but it's also really ridiculously reflective too so i'm not really sure how much uh, ar coating uh, they've used i think it could do with a little bit more to be honest but again you know even under really really bright studio light you can still see it so yeah they're doing something right but it is still very reflective anyway uh, let's talk about how this watch wears and i think it looks a lot bigger than it actually is i think again we've mentioned that dial size is quite large and i think that does give it a lot of wrist presence just because it's all dial that look to look is really nice though it does fit my wrist quite well and I can see we've got that nice downturn I was talking about earlier and it does, you know, conform quite well. I do get a bit of a gap, but my wrist is just the weirdest shape anyway. So that's probably uh, why that is. But yeah, it is a nice watch to wear it's on this strap. You know, it's really nice. I can imagine, you know, this strap being quite comfortable as well. But unfortunately, like I said, it just doesn't fit. Uh, but yeah, really uh, impressed by this one. Nice and lightweight, nice uh, ergonomics. So yeah, definitely a good wear. So now we've got that out of the way, let's talk movement. And as you probably noticed by the sweep of the second hand, this is a high beat. So it's using a Myota 9015. So it's got a 42 hour reserve, 28,800 beats per hour, 24 joule, negative 10 to plus 30 seconds per day, auto and manual winding, hacking seconds. And yeah, 
it's a it's a good movement now uh, another thing that's going to be changing for this one is a little issue i'm having with the watch and that is the crown use now this thing this problem is going to be getting addressed um, for the final release because uh, when you actually uh, use the crown it unscrews all right but in use it's just you know it's not the nicest feeling you know it's it sort of feels a little bit yeah it sort of sticks a little bit when you're using it so it's not perfectly fluid so i think yeah there's definitely some sort of issue with this prototype but they are going to be fixing for the final review so that's uh, nice that they've addressed that and it's going to be uh, resolved when uh, you know these watches are available to you guys that back the kickstarter but yeah, I mean, the movement feels absolutely fine. You know, it's nice and smooth. But yeah, just this crown and stem arrangement, I think, yeah, like I said, it does need tweaking and they are going to. So it's nice that, you know, they're taking that on board and they are going to be addressing that. So the movement, like I said, functions, works fine. It's just yeah, that crown is a little bit of an issue. The actual crown itself is nice. You know, we've got good knurling on it. We've got good grip. It's a nice size, so you can get a good purchase on it. So yeah, no issues on that front, it's just yeah, the actual action and movement of it feels, you know, not the best, but again, you know, it's getting fixed. So now we'll move on to uh, the final uh, part of this review, and that is the Loom. So this is packing BGW9, and do you know what, it's pretty impressive, you know, we've got those large indices, those uh, quite long hands. And, uh, you know, we do get quite a fair bit of loom packed into it. So it's quite an impressive performance. So I've got no real complaints on that front. You know, the BGW9 is well applied. You know, it's nice and neat. It's got good staying power. You know, it's not going to blow you away. It's not like crazy, crazy good. But it's impressive enough, you know, for the price point of this release. Speaking of price point... Kickstarter is going to be 27A, which I don't think is bad at all, especially for the uh, movement and, you know, the quality feel of the watch. Retail is going to be 360A, which I still think is a pretty uh, good price, especially, you know, considering we've got a bespoke case, so it's not just one of those um, sort of off-the-shelf uh, jobs. We've got that Myota High Beat. Uh, you know, the quality of it, the dial, um, you know, all the custom work that's gone into the dial, you know, with the indices and the hands again. They're not just off the shelf. We've got that textured dial. Or, uh, we've got the, uh, you know, the nice nilled crown, that nicely done case back. Yeah, we've got that good quality strap as well. So I think, you know, both prices are really good. Obviously, if you can get it for Kickstarter price, that is going to be the one that you want to go for, you know, because that's like a hundred, nearly £100 saving. So uh, if you're going to get one, Kickstarter is definitely, you know, the price to get it at because it's the most affordable. But I still, I still think if, you know, you're going to grab one at retail, I think it's still a really good price point. So yeah, Atom Watchers, definitely one to look out for. It's a great watch. A few little improvements are going to be made on this prototype that it does need. But other than that, I think they've got a lot of things right and it is a really good watch. I'm, uh, you know, really impressed considering this is, you know, their first outing. So yeah, definitely one to check out. Link in the description, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. If you want to see more content on the channel, click the links you can see right now. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. And of course, feel free to subscribe if you want to stay in touch with the channel. Thanks very much. Have a good one.